Hello and welcome to another thrilling episode of Excalibur CCG TV's Talking Comics, the show where we cover the big number ones and sometimes big storylines for the week. This next uh, week is Wednesday, September 26th. September 26th. We're your hosts, I'm Mark. I'm Olivia. And uh, as always, we are in two locations, here in Shreveport and also up in Texarkana, Texas side. Um, any kind of directions, phone numbers, phone numbers should be up on the screen here, but uh, directions, anything that you need, you can contact us through our website, um, ExcaliburCCG.com, or one of our Facebook pages, um, and that is it for that stuff. Um, let's jump into the uh, big books for the week. Okay, uh, I'm starting. Okay. Um, this one is one that uh, a lot of people have been adding recently, and uh, it looks kind of interesting. This one is uh, from DC Comics, Heroes in Crisis, number one of seven, um, from Tom King and Clay Mann. Um, there's a new kind of crisis threatening the heroes of the DC Universe, ripped from real-world headlines by CIA operative turned comics writer. That's a lot of dashes. Tom King. How does a superhero handle PTSD? Welcome to Sanctuary, an ultra-secret hospital for superheroes who have been traumatized by crime fighting and cosmic combat. But something goes inexplicably wrong when many patients wind up dead, with two well-known operators as the prime suspects, Harley Quinn and Booster Gold. It's up to the DC Trinity of Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman to investigate, but can they get the job done in the face of overwhelming opposition? We'll find out in seven issues. Yep. Okay, Infinity Wars, Iron Hammer, one of two. Um, Marvel, obviously. Um, Al Ewing and Humberto Ramos. Infinity Warps. When Stark Odinson, the brainy but arrogant son of the Allfather, was kidnapped by ice giants and forced to make them all in. And forced to make them an armoring, he turned their forges against them and became the armored Asgardian Iron Hammer. Okay, another one of the little mashups they got going on. Um, next up for me is also from DC Comics. Uh, this was one that's been delayed a couple of times, but it's finally coming out. Justice League Odyssey number one, uh, Joshua Williamson writing, uh, Jepan Sejic on the art. Uh, beautiful art. It's going to be a really nice looking book, if nothing else. Uh, spinning out of Justice League No Justice, when a cosmic menace threatens worlds beyond our own in the Ghost Sector, it falls to a new Justice League team to answer the call to battle. Cyborg, Starfire, Green Lantern, Jessica Cruz, and an out of his element more dashes, Azrael head to deep space inside a commandeered Brainiac skull ship. Um, but as these wildcard teammates try to break through the impenetrable maelstrom, imprisoning the desperate collection of planets, they discover something that nothing in the universe could have prepared them for. Darkseid, who says he's here to help. It's like the young Darkseid version. I guess he's young now. But anyway, he's, a, he's on the team. Alright. Okay, Man Eaters, number one, from Image. Chelsea Kane and Kate Nimskit. Um, and cover art by Leah Miternik. <laughs> okay. A mutation in toxoplasmosis causes menstruating women to turn into ferocious killer wildcats, <laughs> easily provoked and extremely dangerous. Oh dear. As panic spreads and paranoia takes root, the fate of the world rides on the shoulder shoulders of one 12 year old girl. Part cat people, part the handmaid's tale. Man eaters will have everyone talking. Okay. All right. Um, next up for me is from IDW Publishing. Uh, this is Star Trek versus Transformers, number one of four. Um, John Barber and Mike Johnson writing Philip Murphy, Murphy on the art. Several covers. Um, the Transformers 80s cartoon meets the Star, meets Star Trek the Animated Series in a no-holds-barred Saturday morning mashup for the ages. At the edge of Klingon space, the Starship Enterprise finds there's more to the final frontier than meets the eye when Kirk and his crew come face-to-face -face with the strangest life forms of all, Cybertronians. This unprecedented crossover brings together two of the greatest science fiction universes of all time in the style of their classic animated series. That's right, the Transformers look like the 80s cartoon and the 
the Star Trek people look like the 70s cartoon. It's kind of cool. A five-year mission meets a four-million-year war. I'm actually kind of looking forward to this because I enjoyed both of those old cartoons. I enjoyed them. You saw them too? Mm-hmm. Cool. Both of them. A magic of DVD. It was VHS. VHS, okay. Yeah. Stranger Things, number one. From Dark Horse. Jody Hauser, Stefano Martino, and a cover by Alexi Bricolot. The nostalgia igniting hit Netflix original series comes to comic shelves. Follow Will Byers into a dimension of decay and destruction where he must use his wits to resolve the dot to resolve oh and resolve to dodge the pursuit of the Demogorgon and escape the upside down. Okay, I'm not sure how this is fitting in with the TV show. I don't know if this is from a different perspective or I'm not sure how this is all fitting in with the I'm not sure. Yeah. But we'll find out. Um, this one from Dynamite Entertainment. Entertainment. Um, this is Vampirella, Deja Thoris number one crossover, just because Dynamite owns both, both properties and why not? Um, it should have happened. I suppose it seems kind of odd to me, but, but you know, it might turn out cool. Eric Burnham uh, writing Ediano Silva with the art and uh, one of the covers by Jay Anacleto, which is, I, I really like his art a lot. He does very good covers. Um, the encounter that was destined to happen. When an alien ship crashes, crashes on Mars, Deja Thoris must risk reigniting war with the Green Martians and becoming dinner for the White Apes. But the stakes are raised so much higher when the ship is revealed to carry Vampirella, who is on a desperate mission of survival, one that might end before it truly begins. And that's like the regular looking Vampirella, not the new futuristic looking Vampirella. Um, so that could very well be be, be fun. Um, that is it for the number ones for this week. Uh, all, as always, there's tons more stuff coming out. Um, and that With leads number us, twos and number threes and number, number seven hundred fifties and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, that leads us into the current slash back issue of the week. You want to lead us off this time? Okay. I got Infinity Warps, question mark, is what they've called it in our, like, reading thing. Um, Soldier Supreme, and it's got two covers, and they're both pretty cool. Yep. Um, so you got Captain America and Doctor Strange put together. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's out doing his thing. You got Bucky in here <laughs> and Fury, the... Eye patch, or I guess the first eye patch one, Sergeant Fury. Okay. Um, and they they are howling commandos. Nice. Of Hogarth. <laughs> nice, even better. And like he's got his shield, but it's like the weird magic thing okay. that Doctor Strange does. And he's got um, the Red Skull, the Dormammu Red. Okay. It's pretty cool. Very interesting. And that's what it, that's a two issue? It's a two issue. Okay. All right. Cool. Issue one's good. Cool. You're ready for the next one. Well, um, yeah, those those little mashups are always kind of fun. So, good stuff. All right. Um, I'm going back to the 90s. Um, this is back when I, I started reading a little bit more DC because Marvel was really not that good in the 90s. But... Um, until the late 90s. This was one of my favorite books and this one was kind of the turning point for one of my favorite characters as far as um, starting to be a, like a badass. Um, this was Aquaman number two, um, Peter David and Marty England. Um, this is the issue where he gets his hand eaten off by the piranhas um, because Charybdis is holding his you know hand in the water and for some reason piranhas attacked him which they don't really do unless there's already blood and water. But anyway, it was cool. Um, the whole story is cool. Um, he's him and Dolphin are like being held by Charybdis. Um, they wind up breaking free, of course, with a little help. And that, and then the thing happens at the end with the hand and all that. And this is, of course, leading to him getting this like harpoon hand that he had for pretty much all the 90s, I think. Until the 2000s. Yeah, he had it for a while until they turned it into a water hand and then regular hand again um but anyway this this kind of uh kind of upped the reputation of aquaman a little bit which kind of made me happy because i've always liked the character so oh, there was a cartoon where 
he had to go get his kid and he ate off his hand because he was like handcuffed or something, so he just ate it oh, off. Oh, that's, that's pretty badass by itself. And I, my mom was like, oh, mom, it's just ketchup. <laughs> it's just ketchup. Oh, goodness. Anyway, that's our current Slashback issues for the week. And that is our show for the week. As always, like, comment. Subscribe. There you go. Um, let us know what you're looking forward to. And uh, that's it. We will see you next week.